All right, welcome back here. We're looking at section 4.3 again. Riemann sums and definite integrals. Today I want to focus in on the definite integral through geometry. So recall that we've done, or we've talked about, this limit as n goes to infinity of i equals 1 to n of f of ci, where that was a plus delta xi, and del times delta x, where delta x was b minus a over n, or the upper curve, upper boundary minus the lower boundary divided by n. That is equal to the integration from a to b of f of x dx. So now we've made this connection between the summations, the limits of the summations, and the integral. So if we integrate from a to b of f of x dx, we get the area. So can we evaluate the definite integral through geometry? So we'll eventually get into how to figure this out with, with it not being non-geometrical, but today I want to spend just looking at the geometry behind this definition. So if I think about the integral from 0 to 2, here's 0 to 2, of this equation, x plus 1. x plus 1 is going to look... Oh, it doesn't. It goes through 1, doesn't it? I'm going to make it go through 1 there. There it goes. It goes through 1 there. So we're going from 0 to 2 from f x plus 1. So we're looking at this region in here. And we ended the last video talking about this geometry and we have a trapezoid so can we find the area of that region with the trapezoid and we can so we know the trapezoid is one half the two bases added together times the height and the height in this case is going to be the delta x the change in the x in this case two so what is this area? Well, the heights here, if I plug in 1, I get 2. If I plug in 2, I get 3. So I get 2 plus 3. So I get 1 half of 5 times 2, which is going to give me half of 10, or 5. So I get 5 as my area. And the integration from 0 to 2 of x plus 1 dx is 5. All right, if I go from negative 3 to 2 of x. So this is going to bring up an interesting thing that's going to happen. To start with, if I look at x, x is going to be a nice diagonal line there. I go from negative 3 to 2. Notice with this one, I have area that's under the x-axis, and I have area above the x-axis. So when we talk about the integration, we're going to say that if it's below the x-axis, it's going to have a negative area. So we have a negative area over here, a negative value. And if it's above the x-axis, we're going to have a positive area. And it doesn't matter if it's in quadrant 1 or 2, that'll be above the x-axis. And quadrants 3 and 4 are below the x-axis. So we'll have negative area down here, and we'll have positive area up here. So we integrate something, we could get a negative value. That just tells us that more of the curve is going to be below the x-axis than it was above the x-axis. So notice here we have triangles that we've created. <clears throat> so we have this triangle, which is 3 by 3. 3 by 3 gives us 9 halves as our area. So we get negative 9 halves, and to that, we're going to add this area here from 0 to 2. It's going to be 2 um, for our base, and our height here is going to be 2 as well. Again, remember we're looking at the function x. So if I take 2 and plug it in for x, I get 2. Plugging in 3 for x, I get 3. So here I get 2 by 2, which is going to be 4, divided by 2, or 2. So I have negative 9 halves plus 2. Well, that's going to give me... <clears throat> excuse me, a negative 5 halves as my integration. So that tells me that there's more area below the x-axis than above, which makes sense because I went out 3 units in the negative um, area here. I only went out 2 in the positive area here. Some properties of integration. 
if I integrate something from A to A, so my same number, so the integration from 1 to 1 or 5 to 5 of that function is going to be 0. And that makes sense to me because if we integrate, if we have a function just of x and I integrate here at 1, so the integration of 1 and the integration of 1, they're going to be the same. Or there's, there's no area created. So there's no area. It's going to be 0. If I have the integration from a to b of k, f of x dx, where k is a constant, then I can pull that k outside of the integration or the integral symbol, which we've seen in limits, and we've talked in summations as well, and derivatives. From a to b of f of x, if c is between a and b, I can break it up into a to c and then c to b, just like we did up in here. We broke it here at 0. So we went from negative 3 to 0 and 0 to 2 and added those together. The integration from a to b is equal to the integration or the negative integration from b to a of f of x. So what this is doing is it's going backwards. Notice I've flipped my upper and my lower boundaries. So if here is a and here is b and I have my curve there, my area, if I go from A to B, I'm going in the positive direction. I'm above the x-axis, so it's going to be positive in that direction. But if I go from B to A, I'm going in the negative direction. So I'm going to get a negative value, a negative A. And if I have two functions added together or subtracted from each other from A to B, I can take the integration of them separately and add or subtract those from each other. So given that, here's what I'm going to be able to ask of you, and this is kind of the way they like to ask on the exam as well. If we know the integration from 0 to 2 is 4, and 2 to 5 is negative 3, so what does that tell me? Well, from 0 to 2 it's positive, so it's up here. So here's 0, here's 2. doesn't matter what we make there. Uh, we know that this is going to be a positive area, and from 2 to 5, that's going to be a negative area, so negative 3. And again, they could come together if you want. They can be continuous, non-continuous. It doesn't matter as long as we know that the area is here is above and here is below. So can I integrate from 0 to 5? So from 0 to 5, I know it's 0 to 2 and 2 to, three, or 2 to 5. I can add those together and I can get 1. From, zero, from 2 to 0. So from 2 to 0. So from 0 to 2 was positive 4. From 2 to 0... That's going to be a negative 4. From 0 to 2 of negative 2f of x. So I can bring that negative 2 out and take the integration from 0 to 2 of f of x. I know from 0 to 2 is 4, so it's negative 2 times 4 or negative 8. And then from 3 to 3, anytime those are the same value, automatically in my mind, we're going to 0. All right, and the last question I have is kind of, again, something that we're going to see on the exam. Um, we're going to be given a graph, and they're going to ask us to find the integration from 0 to 4 or from something to something. So here, we're going from 0 to 4. So I need to go 0, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, so we're here, and we want to know the area of that region. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this in. I'm looking at this region here, and geometrically, I know that 4 by 3, that's going to give me an area of 12. From negative 2 to 7. Well, negative 2 is here. So again, I could count the spaces if I want. That's 4 units, isn't it? Or it's a trapezoid. You can do that as well. And then 7. we got 4, we got 5, 6, 7 here. So again, we're looking for the area of this region, um, trapezoid. We know our height is going to be 3, so it's 1 half of 3 times the two bases. This is 2. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 plus 2, or 6. So we have, this should be a half. I don't know why I said a third. So we have a half of 3 times 6. That gives us 3. That gives us 9. It's below the x-axis, so it's going to be a negative 9 units. So from negative 2 to 7, I have 4 plus 12 is 16, minus 9 gives me 7. 
And this is kind of where we're going to try to end with here. This is really ultimately what I want you to be able to see. If f of 0 equals 3, so initially, remember those initial value problems that we did back in the first section? Initially, if we know that f of 0 equals 3, then what is f of 10? So here at 0, we equal 3. So in order to get to 10, what we're going to do is we're going to either add or subtract the areas, depending if it's above the axis or below the x-axis. In this case, we're going to the right, so if it's above, it's going to be positive, below is going to be negative. So I need to find the area here from 7 to 10, which is 6, a negative 6, below the x-axis. So if I start here at 3 at 0, then when I get to 4, I'm going to add 12 to it. So I take 3 plus 12 gives me 15. So I'm 15 here. But I'm going to subtract 9 to get to this point here. So I get 6. And then to get here to 10, I'm going to subtract another 6 or I'm going to get 0. So if f of 0 equals 3, then f of 10 has to equal 0. And I can do this for anything. Um, say if I have f of 0 equals 3, then we can find f of um, negative 2 since I already know that value there is 4. So here, if I'm going backwards, then I'm going to subtract 4 units, and I would end up with a negative 1 as my value. So that gives you an idea of kind of where we're headed with this and being able to find the area um, or the value of something given some initial information. So there's an idea of how we're going to do pull integration in with our limits and our areas and our geometry that we've learned in the past. So good luck, enjoy. If you have questions, let me know.